Okay, that's TC back in the stable, outdoor stable. That is the parts tidied up. And now, with the heat being 32, 33 degrees, it's crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think if I can remember a time when it was hotter than this. I do remember 32 degrees uh, a couple of years ago, just for about one day. But not consistently and um, really had a two month run of summer weather which is pretty incredible and i think it's going to be a record and you could even talk about the summer of 76 now that's incredible i mean it's the stuff that you you hope will happen and you get a really long hot summer and it's those kind of dreams are made of long hot summers aren't they well talking of heat what i don't want to happen with ruby i'm going to be doing a lot of shows this season and indeed one coming up this weekend stand in traffic in this heat if you get caught in a classic car queue or a uh, queue on the motorway or any A road, B road, wherever Pinto's can overheat you may say well that's because your cooling system isn't working as it should but my engine when it's quite warm will start to uh, go rough on its idle and a few other pintos i know do the same thing swampy will do it as well when that temperature goes just over half over to three quarters um there could be reasons why it does it but what i don't want to do especially if i'm going to italy as well in ruby i don't want to be overheating in standing traffic so reva tech fan electric fan kit from burton's going to go on Here's our kit, here's our fan, this is a 9 inch fan which is the size which will fit in the front, it's a blower type so we don't see it in the engine bay, you mount it at the front of the rad and it blows through the rad. It goes on a controller which you can fit on your top hose but for me being trying to keep it original looking under here, now we know it's not totally originally looking under here because of the various additions, we've got an electronic distributor there and a few other alterations under the, the bay I didn't want to have the controller box for the fan top mounted although it is best to come off your top hose but there's no reason why it won't work on the bottom hose it may perform differently but it will still switch in if I turn the stat to where I need let's go under and I'll show you where I fitted it for me anyway going on the you're going to see the Reva Tech um, insert with the thermistor, the sensor, the stat, whatever you want to call it, it's actually thermistor because it's electronically controlled it's just, where are we, hose there just on that I'll bring it in okay that is the control box goes to a relay which then fires the fan my bottom hose has to dodge around the power steering belt so I've come lower down, I've come off an elbow on the front of the rad down and under so you can't see the stat controller that's the point of doing that just so that when we look in the bay now it doesn't apparently jump right out at you if we look down from the top you'll see the hose there touching it coming down under the belt because it was going a bit closer when I had a straight out hose when these belts flexed it would just kiss the hose it never really went through it but there could have been a chance when 
that would eventually worn through the hose, the bottom rad hose. So I've come off on an elbow, a rubber elbow, which loops it a lot further under the belts and it gives it a handy chance to fit the inline stat. So that's why I've done that. We're going to test it out. It's hot enough day to just let the car tick over and the fan should kick in. So it's grill off. Then the mounting kit. I'll show you the mounting kit, guys. Um, it should be in the box. It'll be in this bit. We've got the aluminium laser cut. No, laser cut stainless actually. Laser cut stainless brackets fit in there for you to adjust as you need. Uh, if you get the, the larger fan, it does come with some brackets which suit the Escort, Cortina, and Capri radiators. This one on a 9 inch, you don't get that um, Escort fitting, it only seems to come on the 12 inch kit. But we can make these fit, and we're going to find a suitable place to locate our Revatec 9 inch. High powered as well, it's the high winding one, the high powered one. So we should see some good cooling action going on. We can go outside and let the car tick over for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and see if the fan cuts in. And then it keeps our engine from uh, going lumpy when it gets too hot. Why it goes lumpy when it gets too hot, I'm not sure. There's various reasons. It could be due with pre detonation if the cylinder head's too hot and the fuel air mixture's coming in. I've got a Kent FR30 cam on here, which does idle quite nicely. They said uh, put your cam on and you get rough idle. Well, with the FR30 cam, that doesn't seem to be the case. It'll tick over right down to 500 RPM and won't be lumpy. But if I stand in traffic for more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it doesn't happen often that, but it can happen on a hot day, I'll notice that it starts to go a little bit uneven on the tick over. Not where it'll stall, but um, uneven and um, a little bit lumpy till it cools back down. So because of that, I want to keep the temperature below half in standing traffic, and just to cover all bases. And you never know in Italy if I hit a 38 degree heat wave or something, and you could be into problems. Although I would have thought when Ford designed the whole system, they environmentally test the cars. I've seen footage of it where they're in freezer cabinets, they're in oven type setups and testing all the various uh, operating conditions and they really are built to go through anything but perhaps that's not the case when you've changed your cam or any other mods I might have. The, rad, the RAD's good, the system's all flushed and clean so there's no blockages in the radiator or anything like that so we have got a good cooling system. So the rough idle when hot, Swampy does it as well so it's obviously something to do with the Pinto setup. Swampy does do it uh, as well. I noticed that when I first ever built Swampy, actually, I was in a car park in Asda and um, stuck in, in, in a traffic jam in Asda car park, and Swampy got a little bit hot and bothered there. Could be the timing. It could be that when they're hot, the timing should be back a little bit, or the, the compromise of time in between running conditions on this isn't quite right, but it might be because... It's a compromise between the cam, the timing, the operating temperature of the engine. You can also change your stat as well. I'm running on an 88 degree stat. You can get lower. Uh, you can get an 82 stat. So perhaps as well um, it should have an 82 stat when you change the cam. Perhaps there's some kind of science behind it. I'm sure when we inquire and research it enough we'll find the answers. But in the meantime, before we do find the exact answers... There's no harm in fitting the electric fan kit, it's always a good thing to have. So we're going to go ahead, uh, take the grill off Ruby now and put that fan kit in. In case you're thinking of buying one, this might answer some of your questions. Let's put that in, it's a hot day. Okay guys, looks like we might be in luck, guys and girls. Looks like we might be in luck with our fitting. I'm just offering it up now to the radiator, to grill off. Pretty straightforward grill removal. Just watch your tabs. On the bottom of your uh, your grill, if you're on a GXL grill, or in fact any front grill on Cortina, there you're locating tabs for the to secure the bottom of the grill that you don't scrape your your uh, upper front valance. Um, these laser cut brackets we're lucky because let me get the torch. Let me get the extra lighting. Let's get in. That's better, isn't it? We've got, you'll see just in the corner of your screen there, the wires ready, the looms already in for this. It was a plan for when when I did it, I had a feed already in the front when I built the loom for Ruby because we were thinking ahead there. 
but um, the bracket just goes between the radiator mount bolts so they may have done that deliberately and what you can do is just by the nature of the two faces the radiator against the front um, in a panel sandwich that plate so there's no drilling needed so we're not having to drill the car with these type brackets we just pinch it between the two it can't fall down because it's on the bottom 10 mil uh, tech screw you'll see those two screws one just there one at the bottom that they're holding the radiator in from the inside the engine bay so we can slide in all we need to do is cut the bracket arms to suit because they're going to protrude out into the engine bay if you see there so we mark them, we'll just cut just under the mark so that you can't see the edge and the same for the other side, the only tricky bit I can foresee here is getting the other bracket hang on, getting the other bracket I guess the only problem I can see here uh, although it's all good that the brackets fit nicely without any drilling but the only problem I can see is I can't pre-mount these brackets to the fan because I'm not going to be able to engage it in although I suppose I could actually because I can push it all the way to the left then move it over to the right so perhaps we can as long as we can feed the fan through here we're going to give that a try now we're going to uh, tighten these up the brackets come with these little allen key bolts there that comes with the kit and you just got a washer and a lock nut, washer and lock nut and bolt that to the assembly, so very straightforward really I'm keeping my wiring harness to the left hand side, although it doesn't look like the Comex fan is um, height specific or one way round or the other so that's good so it's time to put the other bracket on, tighten these allen key bolts, 10mm plus an allen key gets us nice and tight we can slide in that way then slide in that way then mark on the inside of the engine bay remove cut we can use the angle grinder slitting disc and just slice down the bracket try and get a neat cut on that and then we'll um, we'll bolt that up so that's done and all we've got to do then is tap into our wiring source so the fan needs electrically a permanent live a ground permanent live wants to be 20 amps and um, I'm trying to think, 20 amps ground and then the trigger wires from the sensor which you just saw earlier on that's fitted down into the, the bottom hoses so that's what we're at with that my live feeds just in front of the horns here that's a pair of clacks on horns high and low tone by the way it's very loud time, allen key, 10 mil. slide in, mark, cut and fit Revotech with a Comex fan, now you call them Revotech but then on the fan itself has Comex, I think it's the same company, it's just the way that it works, Revotech could do other electronic products and Comex are the actual fan, but it is a good quality make, well renowned, fully waterproof of course, taking the weather on the front, uh, say 9 inch um, radius, 9 inch diameter, which just fits in ni nicely in this area that you have on Mark III Cortina at least uh, there are other larger fans 9, 10, uh, sorry, uh, 10, 11, 10 and 12 I think, I don't think there's an 11 10 and 12 could be depending on uh, how big you want to go so we're hoping this will do the job I'm going to get them brackets on ok so you're overhead with me now we've got the 10mm socket just lined up, Allen key into the back of the fan housing. Now, interesting, which way would you put the mount bracket? I'm thinking that um, because you've got the heads of the bolts, it might be better to go this side. The only thing that concerns me, I guess, is that the head of these bolts, you don't want touching the, uh, the channel of the radio. Now, I'm hoping that's not going to dig in to the channel of the radio. Now, that, but that bracket slightly makes the fan set back very slightly. Do we go with the fan on this side of the bracket, 
or do we go with a fan on the back? I'm tending to go on the back so that most of the area of the bracket there braces the rad. But the only thing that concerns me is the heads of those touching the, not the fins as such, but the core of the radiator itself. There's nothing to stand it off to protect it from the, uh, the head of the bolt wearing its way into one of the uh, cooling fins of the rad. So we're going to have to just have a rethink about it and just double check that that's something which you can imagine, bring it up to your screen now I'm the rad. One of the cores is coming down, is this bolt going to nibble through the core? Or do we position it so that the bolt heads are between the cores? We have to be quite careful about that and if we do that then it must be fixed rigid. If it tried to drift left or right it could possibly interfere with the cooling vertical core of the rad. So I'm going to double check, let's have a little look if there's a, a fitting kit instruction sheet that advises. I can't see anything else in the pack, so it's one to watch. We're going to offer it up and just see what it's like. Now, we do have the fact that it's sandwiched between the rad and the bracket of the rad does stand forward of the core a little bit, but I'm worried if it flexes. I'm going to fit it and just see. Well, just a little bit of experimentation, let's just see what Okay, just looking at that initial mock-up, it looks okay, that bracket's rigid enough and there's just enough standoff sandwiched between there for those bolts not really to be a problem. It looks like it's a pretty solid setup, especially when you've got them on both sides, so I think I'm pretty confident there, but I may just line it up so just in case the, the bolt head lines exactly up with the, uh, the cooling fins, so if it did push back it's going to push into the cooling fins, not the core. And the core, when I talk about the core, I mean these vertical cooling cores of the rad. And there's the fins in the middle. Now they're not carrying water, the fins, they're just to create surface area, aluminium. So it wouldn't really matter if they got hit. Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. We now attach the other bracket, slide all the way to the left, and we should be able to fit it both sides. Plenty of light there for you for a change today, guys. Let's get this Revitec kit in. Okay, just so we know it's central, 22 and a half is the middle of the rad, which corresponds to the, this core here. So the middle dot of the fan, for that one that means we're done exactly in the middle of the uh, rad, which is like, just keep everything parallel, symmetrical, makes me feel better. No reason why it can't, just as easy to get it right now. So the centre line with the centre core, so we're bang in the middle. Then we can mark this bracket now in the engine bay. I can't fit the other bracket, actually didn't work sliding it all the way to the left because it catches on a clip. So I'll mark this one, we'll cut both brackets, in theory both brackets will cut the same. Then we can slide in that way and then slide back that way, should just about work. That's how we're going to fit. Okay, I've marked out the brackets for cutting. 60mm off the end, lands us right in the middle and just sandwiched nicely between the rad. So we'll slice those down now with a slicing disc and then we can uh, actually bolt this one up. Okay, we're 60mm cut off the end of each one and now then bolted up with those Allen key and 10mm bolts and nuts, or 10mm nuts. Guys and girls, we can slide this into there and then all the way to the left, then back out to the right to the middle, then lock the radiator back up against the inner panel and that's the fan should be mounted. Let's give that a try. Join me as I fit this, watching the paintwork. Always a risk when you're doing this. Just about enough to do it, just that 60mm fit. I'll keep out of your way. Across, I go that way, and now back in this way. And that makes for an easy fit, and it works. So that's where we're going, hold it up into the middle and then tighten up the radiator. Bolts taking you up and in. Okay, so I'll let me, I obviously need other hands now, I'll tighten up. We should be locked up and we'll check the clearance on those bolt heads against the cooling fins and the cooling. Okay, we're in nicely centralised and no, no uh, touching on there and you'll see them bolts are in line with the cooling fins themselves not the core so if they ever did slam into the rad they're not going to hit the water the waterways what a way to have a good time okay 
around I like that I do like that fit and it sandwiches nicely between the rad and the inner panel now I said 60 mil 65 would be better I've got a little bit overhanging into the bay okay but it doesn't look too bad so watch that 65 probably better to take off them on a nine inch fan if you're doing this cut 65 off your fitting brackets universal fitting brackets okay now for the electrical side of things that, that's good I like that okay we're ready to start the electrical connections now and we'll see looking at the fan connector a two blade Lucar plug pause and neg ground and 12 volts however you want to call it now you don't get the loom with the kit you do get an electrical fitting kit with the control uh, stat which is can be ordered separately and I think this is the bag here for the control stat the e, EFC 32 that comes with a, a little harness kit that you've got to build yourself so I'm just building up the the ground wire now supplied with the kit is the black ground lead but uh, you cut to suit I've uh, crimped that in I'm going to solder it as well I like to uh, crimp them and solder them these push in to the uh, the back there so you don't have to fit that first so I go in and do that I'm going to rest the camera on the tripod I'll talk you through soldering that up okay you get a couple of eyelets as well no big deal I'm coming in with the soldering iron now ready uh, to place a solder onto that new card using a cardboard box in fact it's the fan controller packaging uh, just to help you see it better rather than the tiled floor so I go on there with my solder so we're done just be careful it doesn't flow too far into the blue car pin it won't engage so that one's done and that just fits now just make sure we get the orientation right I'm going up to the loom off screen to see which one's the neg the neg is the top one now in my hand sliding in the loom cart with the cable to the top and that'll push in and home I think it's that way yeah it is right we just need to give that a little bit of a push through and that'll clip in in a sec the positive side switch side that comes out of the relay which is in the kit again you're just off screen I'm going to take you up onto it now and I'll show you how that works up we go sorry for the delay there in my hand is my already pre-installed 30 amp feed with a fuse make sure you use a waterproof cap fuse fuse doesn't come with the kit so a waterproof cap fuse will be good I think it's going to be so pre-installed 30 amp feed but make sure you use a waterproof inline fuse I think this fan needs 20 or 30 amps I would imagine 20 amps I'll check the spec but a blade fuse going in there and a little tip for you as well because this is all in the line of fire of water I use this connector protector which contralube 770 which you put in so we put that into the blades there you see like that and it just stops corrosion also onto the onto this plug here because it's the uh, fans right by the radiator all the water is going to be coming through there so we'll keep the connectors with this uh, contralube uh, it's a protective gel stops it um, getting uh, corrosion when water and if water would enter all heat shrinked up as well for our connector into our 30 amp supply and that's going to the relay which comes with a controller kit relay is just here I'm going to reach in and grab it for you that's the control relay that then gives an output on this blue wire which then connects to the other plug here and that, that feeds the 12 volts into the fan so really this just switches off and on with the temperature 12 volts so that goes in then we can hook up to the fan connector there you need uh, two lots of earth one earth for the control box and again as I said this black wire will terminate in one of these uh, eyelets and we connect that to the to the ground of the car so two ground connections one 30 amp feed with, via a fuse and then into this uh, plug here and then that's it that's electrical stuff done so I'm going to carry on soldering up and fitting these uh, wires on we need to cut this blue cable now to the right length and fit this spade connector on it this Lucar connector and push it into the plug we'll put some heat shrink around it and make our own little mini loom as well 
Okay, that's everything in. That's that little wiring harness made up. Some heat shrink over it to uh, to keep it looking smart. And then that eyelet soldered up there. Just getting it with my finger for you. I soldered on. So we just need to put both those earths, find a suitable earth now, and a, and a 20 amp blade fuse. Put the heat gun on this heat shrink, shrink it down a little bit, and just tidy up the wires into a little bunch. And then that's that wiring done for the farm. We can test it. So not much to do. As I said, a 30 amp feed two earths and then an output from the control relay solder into your your, your multi-plug there put some uh, heat shrink on or make your own little loom and you're good to go okay everybody that's the installation complete relay just nicely tucked under the front panel there and then the fuse easy access when you take the grill off to get to that so all I've got to do is put the blade fuse in there and then run the engine up and the fan should cut in let's go and give it a try Got the earth just on the headlamp panel there, didn't want to drill another hole in the car, that's already there and it's out of sight as well. So that's, I forgot to say, you do actually get, with the kit, a uh, quick pull-through kit, which is sort of, um, kind of like, zip ties in a way, but they go through the rad, straight through the rad and into the mount holes of the uh, fan. So if you didn't want to do the metal brackets like I've done, it does come with this fpk01 i think that's the brackets are separate i think they're 15 quid extra for the brackets fans around 85 to 90 pounds including this but not the control that's just the fan itself full control kits 199 quid uh, i think that includes the mount brackets as well escort ones fit cord cena okay uh sorry for focus there can you get that okay ready to test all in. Lights on it. Hang on. Lights on it. There you go. Even though we're in pretty bright daylight outside, it's still a bit dark in the garage. So we're all ready. Just a blade fuse to go in. Sorry about that, that's exactly where we want it to be. It came in just under half, which is what I want. Let's just see how quick it can bring the temperature down. Right, we've done the first test, that's cutting in and out nicely. And we now got the grill back on. Don't forget, uh, didn't mention this earlier, I noticed it when I put the grill on. It's surprising how much you can see the brackets. So, what I've done, I've got some vinyl wrap and um, some quite thick black vinyl wrap and I vinyl wrap my brackets you could uh, satin black them but I think it'll chip off as stuff goes through that grill and you'll end up with little pepper marks and they'll start to shine through because the aluminium brackets are pretty shiny so I've vinyl wrapped the brackets there and it looks a bit better you can't see the fans there now whereas before you could see the silver bars through the grill so it looks a bit better gonna do one more test now what we do get and I didn't mention this earlier on is um, that uh, you can have it on permanent live feed uh, to the relay so that when the system powers down it will carry on cooling and running the fan this runs for about two minutes and cuts off now I haven't got the luxury of a switched feed at the front I plumbed in a permanent 30 amp cable really what I should have is a an override wire so you could always switch the fan overrided uh, if you ever wanted to if in the event of the coolant failure, in the event of the start failure, sorry. So there's that to think about, but uh, at the moment it's up and running. And you, as I say, you get that overrun um, when, and when it cools down, it cuts off. It takes about two minutes, as I said. So if that was to go faulty, yep, you could flatten your battery, the fan might not switch off. So perhaps it's better on ignition feed, um, which case we would have to find a switch feed. Now we could do it because you've got a switch feed coming in around your ignition side just by the battery I could bring that across and get it to trigger it uh, when relays close down for ignition and off when the relays off ignitions off to kill the fan circuit that's something to think about but for now we're up and running and we're going to do one more test up to temp see how long it takes to cut in I'll time this one standing then uh, air temperature today is 31 degrees indoors it's probably a bit less when I roll it out and um, then we're going to see how long it takes in simulate standing traffic so last test for the uh, the Revatec fan kit from Burton Power 
all in my kit was just under 200 so it's quite expensive but it's a very powerful unit it doesn't half blast the air through that a high power high torque uh, blade nine inch uh, fan Revatec uh, kit with a comex uh, stamped up fan as I said from Burton Powell you can just get the uh, motor if you want and put a, a normal a cheaper type stat on if you want or just an override switch on your dashboard or somewhere out of the way perhaps don't be drilling your dash for Cortina okay that's that little clip we'll stick some bonus stuff on now I might have uh, started the video the wrong way around but TC then uh, goes out uh, for a little drive with Dave and we're going to salvage some panels and I'm going to start tidying up the area where that small prefab goes and um, we're going to do uh, some spot weld removing Dave needs a panel for his uh, car that he's doing his Crayford so we're going to uh, sort him out some panels they're going to pop down we're going to go for that it's actually time reverse because it's already happened <laughs> hope you don't mind so another little upload before we start bramble we can only strip bramble at the moment bit by bit that's all I can do for you for entertainment I do want the workshop up and running okay over and out for this little clip and enjoy this little trip out in the uh, in TC it's quite funny enjoy and I'll catch you soon once again thanks for the comments on at Cortina City don't forget if you're not looked at Patreon jump across try and support us if you can even if it's just chuck a dollar a month in ain't a lot but if it all adds up I mean I think we've got nearly 4,000 subscribers if we get everyone on board and the money can go into Bramble I mean don't think it's not a beg it's just uh, if you want to pay for some extra entertainment, some extra videos that are on Patreon, there are, there are some bits and bobs. For the true uh, enthusiasts, it's, uh, it's out there and there's uh, goodies and giveaways happening when it gets properly going. We're not even into the swing of Bramble yet. Uh, we're not even got going and I know I've kept you waiting and I do apologise for keeping guys on a, on a string and I've tried to keep some video footage going just to keep you in so don't lose any of you good guys out there good guys and girls who subscribe and comment appreciate it all all the constructive uh, criticism and praise appreciate the whole lot i'm always doing something cortina related at least that's a good thing okay it might not be concentrating on bramble as much but you'll always get those cortina related videos from friends family and everything else okay we'll catch you soon clip coming up now over and out from pete cortina before i go we're going to test this again Okay, let's leave it ticking over. Sorry about that, before the clip comes up. Okay, so just waiting now for the fan to kick in. Timing it on the clock. I'll take you to it, see how long it takes. What the hell? Whee! <laughs> Now then, I've just said, I've just told everyone I'm, I only do Cortinas. What's going on? I know it's a heat wave, but woo! This is dolly. This is it. That's what you want for your summer. Is it an ice cream van? You could serve ice cream through the back. A camper, a free birth camper at that. Nice. Let's go. Let's get. Let's get onto it. Okay, so we're in. Two and a half minutes, that was in, three minutes. Okay, so there's our overrun. Powerful unit. coming out of that, it's a very powerful unit. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Might agree. Just stick a cloth in front of it. A lot of power there. So we're done. See you for the next clip. Okay, so that's all the tests complete, and I just didn't show you earlier on the controller itself. There it is, just sitting in line. Two jubilees holding it between those uh, the uh, return hose at the bottom of the rad. You see where I go, just under. 
I do that to clear the um, power steering drive belt. So that's a little blue square you see in the middle of the screen has got an adjuster on it. You turn that to set your temperature cutting point. We've got it set about 70, 75, somewhere around there, which is, uh, seems to be working just good for what we want. So that's the wrap then on that one. And as I promised, uh, some clips coming up at TC. I just realised I hadn't filmed the, uh, the controller stack. So it's got that little loom coming out, that braided loom. That one's tidying up at the end. It's frayed. So we'll put some tests around there. Uh, we might even put a better tape on. Tessa's good. Tessa's a cloth tape. Uh, really good stuff for doing right wiring uh, loom wraps. But um, I don't think it's fantastic in the open element. So we need to put a probably a self amalgamating rubber tape on the end of that frayed harness that you see there. So that just neatens it up. So that's about the only thing I would change. And um, probably those hose clips there. Swap them for wire ones to keep in keeping with the the uh, 71 look. But other than that, that's the controller going up to the uh, relay. So that's the stat controller. Just thought I'd highlight that before we close. And we've seen that thermostat cutting in and out. And we get a, a 1 minute 30 second overrun when you turn the engine off, which is okay. I can, I can live with that. If it ran for 5, 10 minutes, I'd be getting a bit worried. Although the battery, I'm sure, could cope with that. But, um, you know, it cuts out good enough. So um, thermostat, Revitech. Comex fan, all done and fitted and running nice, so we'll look forward to that coming into action. And uh, the car engine running just at the right temperature, superb. And now that we're happy with the temperature setting, we put the cover cap on and that finalises it all. So this little uh, plastic cap to go over the cover, a little bit tricky when I'm filming with the uh, right hand on the camera there, but we clip on, just in position, let me get my thumb on that and press that home, there we go, so that's it, is the writing the right way up, because that'll do me head in if it's not, damn it's upside down, I can't have that, hold on, that'll do me head in, oh bugger, I've clipped it right home, hang on guys, things have, it's, it's all gone belly up, no though, we're back in the game, sorry about the dodgy camera work then, Clip on, there's the Revotech cover, we like it uh, like that, the right way up. And as I said, some self amalgamating rubber tape to finish that frayed end, because that looks a bit tatty, doesn't it? As do those hose clips, we hate hose clips. Well, we don't hate hose clips, but um, they're just not in period keeping, so we'll have to swap them out. But all the points proven, and you might see while we're on, we may as well mention this. There's no harm in doing it, I believe there's quite a few people with Mark III Cortinas that do watch, although it's bizarrely a small percentage of the YouTube viewers happen to have uh, Mark III's. We've sort of crossed over into just other audience figures, audience demographics. This hose here that you can see, this is looping down to clear the power steering belts. Um, the, radi the radiator that I've got is the front uh, exiting tubes as opposed to the right angled ones on later Cortinas. Early Cortinas, the radiator hoses come straight out to the front of the front of the rad. I wanted it to look that way, but that caused a problem by being very close to the drive belts when you fit power steering. Without power steering, you wouldn't have this problem. So I made this hose up. It's a bit of a hybrid. This is an original hose from a, a, a later car. And then we've got a section of top hose. You can't quite see it there if I scroll up pan up you can just see that's a, that's a top hose from a, an early rad cut down to suit the angle that the control box fits and then that's a, a traditional later hose but running underneath the anti-roll bar at the front which gives us clearance there so nothing touches nothing's going to rub through and it misses the drive belts we've had a quick clearance solving that issue with the power steering pump so I've gone on enough I hope you enjoyed the Revitech fan fit and as promised, here comes T. TC gets a little charge before we introduce you. Hello, Cortina City back again for some more films. To just a little update video, not the start of Bramble yet, but it is an update video. TC goes on charge for 
just a little run around the block bramble starts getting the ancillaries out of the engine i've got to strip the car here the garage is going uh, here not mega size but enough to do a rotary a uh, rotary action on the car on the spit so we're just going to build it just enough to spin a car and work around it we're stuck with available space but we'll, we'll get a nice uh, size shed in for me anyway working it out on how i did i mean mikey did um swampy we managed to work up to where my hand is and we did the whole swampy so if i can make that size that's all i need okay hang on a second i want this to pick up sorry about that the lars i just need enough to get in the size that i worked on swampy so i can build swampy in that size i can build bramble in that size and then i'll go all the way up to the the max size i'm allowed to build the the modular garages are built for the regs in mind so that's okay they've got all the sizes that you need so looking at it from that point of view we'll spin the car around in the uh, the garage height wise you've got to get well cortina max width six foot so your three foot rate uh, three foot radius uh, diameter six foot spinning circle so we've got to make sure our spars in the prefab are enough just to get it to spin okay so that's that in the meantime i'm going to start taking some bits off bramble now so so it's less work so we can start getting bits of trim off get all this um, grill and everything packaged up and they'll start stripping the engine because we need to lift that engine out it's good weather at the moment so we could probably do it outside normally we'd like to be inside a garage but I don't know what the, this rabble are doing looks like a bit of panel work so you starting on bramble already Dave thank you very much Why not? floor first please for me oh, I do like this action yeah 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 it's very nicely done and the sun, of course, helps oh, to soften the... Although some say it's easier when it's uh, frozen, but... Well, it's definitely I don't think it is. It's worse when it's, when it's cold. It just shatters everywhere. This panel, uh, Dave and Tony need it for a project they're doing, so I'm having a parts clear out. We're just, you're on YouTube, guys, by the way. Hello. Hello, YouTube world. <laughs> Tony knows. He's a fan. Dave doesn't get much time to watch it. If you remember, this was uh, the two-door Portuguese shell, which was saved as many bits as we can. Parts here for Bramble as well, so that's why these items have been saved. Okay, so we're all saved up round this end. So we're salvaging panels today, everybody, in the sunshine. Why not? Uh, if I take you across to Bramble's boot, have I been calling that Ruby? I keep calling it Ruby, and it's not. Stop calling it Ruby, you. No, go into here. Parts that we've saved. You never know when you might need one of these. You never know when you might need one of these. But we've also got new old stock bits in here, which we had to keep out of view of the boys. We didn't want getting too excited. Even every little panel I could think of saving off the scrap metal pile, I've been calling it. Even stuff like this, boot catches. Even though that one's not the best, it's still good for someone who might need it to make a shape. All sorts of parts have been salvaged. Even these door shut panels, there, door shut panel, jack mounting plates, I don't waste anything. So all this metal that's getting chopped today is all going to good homes and everything's being used. Them wheel tubs can be used for reference points, especially around this difficult to fabricate lower part of the wheel tub if you look. Cameras in harsh light, bring it out now. That difficult to replicate shape. Okay. So we'll keep keeping them. I'm going to take the parcel shelf off. We've already started on the spot welds there. Break everything down. These boys are removing this. Nice and quiet. That goes. In the sunshine. Having a look at Bramble's cross member, making sure that I didn't need it and shoot myself in the foot. It's okay. Bramble's good there. Bramble's going to need some repair panels up on the front end but we've got them more parts then inside here another one of those plenty of stuff all over the place
two from one. Yeah, we're best uh, moving along now, trying to get this off. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Well, the other one's the other one's just that one slightly as well. The other one's just Wheel is up. What's going to happen? Hold up your trophy, Dave. Okay. Express. Look at that Ford Primer in there. Ford Primer. Ford. Yeah. Look upside down. Ford original Primor. It's primordial. There you go. game trophies or primer underneath there. This one goes to which car is this going on Tony? Uh, this is going on the uh, Crayford okay, so uh, ALN and we've saved this piece for someone who's converting to manual from auto. They always ask for those. Some chassis pieces just because we had them. We use that as repair pieces. Profile's the same along the car most of the way. There's a slight change but they're handy and then a parcel shelf because you often get this damaged you never know when you might need it just because we could the base of it's got a few more bits but we'll flip that up out of the way good day put all the booty in the back five five then i'll give you four for the next one it's got a bit of moss on it smells like an old car this is tc tc pub run there seems to be a lot of alcohol featuring on my channel these days. I think we're going downhill. Yeah. Someone put a put a stop to it. Yeah, we'll put a stop to this. We're ready to uh, go. It's too nice not to. Hands are down again. Just get the beams. Maximum speed. <laughs> yeah, we're going faster. This is the vehicle's maximum speed. Oh, I feel like chill coming, man. It's a miracle, it's actually, it's 1977 on the, on the ramp, not moved, to have it go in again like this. Nice and smooth. It, I assume that's the, uh, the low petrol indicator. Right? So that's all the oil, oil, oil <laughs> pressure. <laughs> We've got no oil, no oil, no oil, no oil today. Smoking back, the blowback on the rings. Ah, radio and that. 
just grab all the end of the aerial tape and <laughs> get a signal. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> yeah, we're getting something, hang on. Hold it. 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 That guy Stan, what's his name with it? Uh, <laughs> Stan Colin Collingwood. <laughs> Stan Collingwood. <laughs> Hello everybody. See, TC delivers consistency. That's what it's all about. Well, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it in the pub. Isn't it a bit low? Cross ply. No, then they've got good thread. Uh, threads, good yeah, tre tread on. It's on yeah, probably cross ply. The sun, that. Remember the adverts? Don't mix radios and cross ply. Yeah. yeah. Same actual. Is it lost in that? That's definitely a cross ply. Well, there's plenty of tread on them, isn't there? Yeah. It's all right. They're the most cross ply. Very good, then. 1973 technology. Guys. I oh, know. Tony's just turned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, things have took a turn for the worse at the Wenlock Spring. I can't risk it. I <coughs> cannot risk it. I've not even finished that yet. Not even for a biscuit. No. What we don't want the channel to turn into is a sort of a drunken charade. You know? Well, you want to come round to our garage one time. That's why we should have a drunken charade. We've got to. <laughs> step toe and so. Yeah. At some point. At some point, we've got to get serious, back to getting serious and get cutting metal. No. You can only cut metal when you're not serious. No, 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 we need to... Welsh, I mean, today we had a taste of spot weld, uh, spot weld cutting, didn't we? Spot weld cutting, cutting spot welding. Spot weld drilling. I'm doing the spot welding. Spot weld removal. Yes, indeed. estamos aquí. And here we are. That's, that's yeah, Dave, yeah. Look at him. He's drunk as a lot. He's legless, he? He's legless, he? Yes. Right, well, I should... Good job he's not driving. Actually, I shouldn't. I've got to be res send out responsive message on my YouTube there channel. We're ready. We're going back. Sure you think we're yeah. I'm not drinking. Never spoke to you. Do you want to have a look at my uh, time capsule uh, tub? Release the beast. What have we got in here? Release the beast, Dale. David. Yeah. It's not like it's a bloody one of those rubber snakes. <laughs> 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 you said it was the 70s. Hey, mate, it's working at TV repairs. Well, that's where the car's registered. Same as mine. 17 numbers different. This man, tell, tell, tell the people at home. Your reg My car is a 1300 base model in dark cherry and it was registered in Birkenhead TCM 758L. How many numbers away from this? And it's 17 numbers before this. Before TCM TC? 775L. How about that? And yours is a base 1300 estate and mine is a base 1300 saloon. And yeah, registered in Birkenhead, and there we have it, the Birkenhead and District Cooperative Society Limited. Look at that, six, that would have been the old 051. Mm -hmm. The old yeah. 051. Are these things you've dug from under the seat side? Yeah. Fingering. <laughs> <laughs> finger oh. <clears throat> a little bit of asbestos dust. <laughs> Shit, is that a figurine panini packet? Mm -hmm. God, I used to collect these. <laughs> it is as well. Mm. Euro football. What year Roll up packet, 8p kit cat. What else have we got in here? When you got the last roller? Well, what, it wasn't me. What is this? They're collectible cards. I googled them up. They look like a cigarette, sweet cigarettes or something. Lions made, so yeah. they're ice cream people. Lolly, aren't lolly they? cards, the lolly cards, and they're highly collectible. Cards. That's worth about seven p. This, <laughs> this here is probably crawling in bacteria. Crack cocaine, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all downhill after Obviously the Vix. Really well, he wanted up on the Vix. Oh, was the good stuff at the top, was it? <laughs> the Vix inhaler got him onto the crack. Jubilee seventy-seven. Jubilee rock, yeah. That's where I've got no teeth at my age. 
See, this is where it I'm all not started. not touching this because no. it's probably been up somebody's schnauz, hasn't it? Well, that's where it all started, isn't it? Mm. Worse. What, you start with that and progress to the little wraps of silver foil? Yeah, I don't know what Here we have it, coupon worth 10 pence off your next purchase of cooking yeah. sauce. Was it, was it own prize, isn't it? <laughs> fry bentos. Fry bentos, good sauce. Lions uh, fry bentos. I said it's like fry bentos. Here we all are, freeze up. In, yes. in the book. In fact, that'd be quite a good angle to film from there. Dave, you might be able to hold the camera. Can oh, you see the screen? Like the that? There might be a touch of a, a, a scuttle shake. Scuttle shake. Oh, oh, it can't be a bit of scuttle shake. Mm. Right, okay, so I'm going to wrap up the gold now. <coughs> he scoffs. He scoffs. He's <laughs> you ready, boys? Hold on tight. Oh, it's going to be a big one. Another police vehicle. I'll have to accelerate away now. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the camera can't pick it up on that. Oh, there's fumes. It's going to be all going to come in there. So, it seems to be... Increased ventilation. Whoop, whoop. I'm just going to suck more in. This dolphin's not causing it. <laughs> Increased ventilation. Steady. 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 <laughs> I told you about the smoke. You're saying it's just, just the fucking uh, the crack case breeze. She's barely without it. <laughs> TC! Come on, boy! You run for your money, I'll TC. Rubbish. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a lot of smoke. Has <laughs> 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 the extra ventilation helped or? Yes, it smells like snow <laughs> fields in here now. Okay. Bye, Nacho. We'll see you very soon, guys. Yeah, nice. There you are. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you can make out the smoke coming out of You see the smoke? Are you worried about scratching it? <laughs> ah, there's the smoke. There, see the smoke? <coughs> What's this? It's got a scabby man. No, man. What's this in front? What is that? I think it's in the garage, man, actually. Cut the film.